break down the essentials of auditing your potential restaurant space, a crucial step before you commit to a lease. Strap in, this is where the real magic happens. First off, we'll use a floor plan to map out the dimensions and layout of the space. Think of it as your bird's eye view blueprint, giving you a clear picture of what you're working with. This floor plan isn't just for design, it's your ticket to effective communication with the landlord. With it, you can pinpoint the total area of your restaurant space, map out room dimensions, measure the linear frontage of your restaurant, determine kitchen space for equipment and countertops, allocate square footage for different areas like dining, bar, and kitchen, identify the vertical shaft's location and size, Crucial for ventilation without disturbing neighbors. Now onto your checklist. First up, calculate the total area of the space by multiplying its length and width. Let's say it's 2949 square feet of prime real estate. This number is your North Star, guiding you in conversations with the landlord and helping you sift through options like a pro. But wait, there's more. With your floor plan in hand, make sure to highlight the dimensions of each room. Don't just focus on the total area. Next up, let's talk ceiling height. You'll want to know the full clear height space from floor to structural deck above, essential for accommodating all your restaurant essentials. It's a game changer in your restaurant space. You need to know the full vertical stretch from your feet to the structural floor above. Why? Because that space is your canvas, your box for creating restaurant magic. Think about it. All your kitchen gadgets, utilities, and design elements will hang out up there. So, the higher the ceiling, the more room you have to play with. If there are differences in ceiling heights, don't sweat it. Just ask the landlord if they're willing to raise them or if they're set in stone. Remember, every inch counts when it comes to maximizing your leased box. So, challenge those conditions and aim for the sky, literally. Vertical transportation? No, it's not a sci-fi concept. It's just a fancy term for stairs and elevators. If your restaurant sits below other occupied floors, chances are you'll have some stairs or an elevator nearby. Now, here's the scoop. Check if there are any doors connecting to your space and if they're accessible to tenants. Also, find out if there are any code requirements for access to your restaurant. Typically, stairs lead out of the building and elevators have a lobby that opens to the exterior. But don't stop there. Take a stroll through the building's common corridors during your site visit. Check out all the entry and exit points to your restaurant space. It's all about making sure everyone can move around comfortably and safely. All your kitchen steam, smoke, and sizzle need a route to escape, right? That's where the vertical shaft comes in. It's like a secret passage that whisks away all those delicious cooking aromas. Now here's the thing. The size and location of that shaft are crucial. It needs to reach all the way up to the building's top without any detours out the front or side. Why? Because you're cooking up a storm beneath folks living or working upstairs. And we don't want to cloud their space with our kitchen magic. So, when scoping out your potential restaurant spot, Keep an eye out for that vertical shaft. It's your ticket to keeping things cozy for everyone in the building, upstairs and downstairs. Now let's talk doors. Front of house, back of house, entrances, exits. How many entrances and exits does your restaurant space have? It's essential to know. First, distinguish between front of house doors for guests and back of house doors for staff. You want to ensure that guests have separate entrances away from staff areas. Make sure these entrances are clearly marked on the plan. And here's a pro tip. <laughs> Ask the landlord if you can add more doors. It's ultimately up to them and city regulations. But if they say yes, be sure to get it in writing in your, in your lease agreement. Let's not forget about the exterior walls of your space they're crucial to define. Don't just assume based on a site walk or floor plan. Ask about the boundaries of your demised space and whether you share walls with neighboring tenants. Understanding what's on the other side of those walls is key. Shared walls might limit your ability to add doors, windows, or utilities. So, 
always clarify to avoid surprises down the road. Now, let's talk about fire protection, a critical aspect of your build-out. It's crucial to ensure that the landlord provides a fully functional fire protection system with no defects. This includes a fire alarm system, strobe system, and fire suppression lines that are active and up to code. Make sure you know the location of the fire alarm panel, as you'll need to connect to it later on. And here's a tip. Ensure that your fire alarm panel is dedicated solely to your space and the tenants within your building, not shared with other buildings or tenants. This ensures proper functionality and safety for everyone involved. Now, let's talk about utilities, focusing on your electrical panel. It's essential to understand the capacity of the existing electrical panel in your space. In simpler terms, you want to know how much power you have available. Documenting this early is crucial because we'll need to assess if the electrical capacity meets the requirements for your kitchen equipment, lighting, and appliances. If the space has insufficient capacity, don't worry. We can demonstrate to the landlord that upgrades are necessary. And here's the best part. They'll typically cover the cost of these upgrades, so it won't be an additional expense for you. We'll delve deeper into this process in our next class. Keep in mind, all the groundwork you're doing now is in preparation for the lease agreement. This is where you'll compile all the details you've researched into a formal legal document that you'll sign with the landlord. But don't worry, we'll cover that in more detail later. Great job so far? You've embarked on the first leg of your restaurant construction journey and there's plenty more to come. Join us in the next chapter where we'll break down the auditing process into easy step-by-step -step instructions. By the end of it, you'll be a pro at identifying and addressing issues with your landlord. These skills are invaluable for negotiating a better lease, which means more money in your pocket. <laughs>